Hey everyone, we're the Violet Reality. Reality. I'm Casey Rain. I'm Kim Camellia. And welcome, welcome to, to This, this Week in Prince, episode 29. 29. And it has been probably the biggest week since we started this show yeah. um, because, of course, this past week has been the one year mm -hmm. anniversary yeah. of Prince's passing. And so many, many things have been planned for a very long time, all leading up to this week, all that yeah. happened on this week. And so we can't really. Unlike other weeks, we can't really cover everything that went on in this past week because the show would so have to much. be like an hour long if oh, we did no. that. Yeah. And like, that's just not possible. <laughs> as much as we yeah. would love to do that, and I'm sure some of you would love to see that, it's not really possible for us to do an hour long show. No. But, Maybe oh in well. the future, but you know, yeah. We're going to cover all of the things um, that we feel have been particularly important over yeah. this last week. Um, but apologies if there was something that you wanted us to cover that's happened in the past week and that we don't get to it because we can't get to everything. But no. And oh well. then if you went to an event that maybe wasn't in like the UK or Minneapolis or anywhere that we've covered in the past This Week in Princess or in this week's one, just tell us about it. Tell us in the comments and tell the world about your experiences because we're very, very interested in those. Yeah. And speaking of your experiences, this past weekend we had the celebration at Paisley Park. So for whoever of you who went out there, please, please, please tell us about it because we're I think we might make a special video about that to like have your reviews included in it. Yep. Yeah. Um if you went to the celebration, let us know in the comments, let us know what your highlights were. Obviously George Clinton played, the revolution yeah. played. MPG, Third Eye Girl played, lots of talks by lots of different people. Um, too much to cover in this video, but obviously we didn't go, but if you were there, let us know in the comments your thoughts. Now, let's get on to the two massive things that happened this week, yeah. apart from the celebration. So number one, the Deliverance EP. So, surprisingly, out of nowhere, last week the media and the news lit up with news of a brand new Prince EP called Deliverance and all is not as it seems with this release. So yeah. it's not an authorized release that came from the estate. In fact, the estate immediately filed a lawsuit to get it blocked and succeeded. Now, what happened was that an engineer named Ian Boxhill, who worked with Prince for a few years in the mid 2000s, around Lotus Flower 3121 kind of era, um, has apparently done a deal with a record label called RMA and put this EP up for sale on iTunes and whatnot and all the different platforms um, against the wishes of the estate. It has since been pulled, but the tracks are out there. Um, you have some awesome tracks on this release called, uh, there's obviously the track Deliverance, there's another amazing track called I Am and yeah. several others. Make sure you go online and Google for it. If you can't find it, it's worth listening to even though it has not seen a proper release now because it's not an official release. But yeah. Um, it, is, it is awesome to hear, the songs are fantastic, um, you know, maybe Ian can actually do a deal with the estate um, and get it released officially at yeah. some point in the future, um, although he may have hurt his chances of that by just going rogue and putting the tracks out there. Um, but maybe, you know, he just wanted to get them out there yeah, maybe. Um, for the fans, yeah. so and, um, you never know. Yeah. We also know that there's mixed emotions about this and that people felt in different ways about it because it's obviously a release that didn't come from Prince or the Prince estate and so it's like different from what it would usually be and some people are really against buying this EP and some people are like oh we should buy it and we want to hear it so even if your opinion is different from like ours because obviously we listen to it you can tell us that as well so we won't judge you for that obviously. Yeah I mean you know the terms of of the release and all that drama is one thing and in the long run it's not really that important what's important is the music and yeah. the songs are really really great in my opinion i really really <laughs> liked him especially yeah. i am that was my favorite it does. So. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> so that's all that right, make yeah. sure you listen to deliverance if you haven't yeah. already um and then moving on to the next yeah. big news of the week we, um, which uh yeah you we, can uh, thank us for yeah, we did something <laughs> naughty <laughs> we um we uh, we sort of leaked the track list or what like well obviously not the in the right order but we leaked the tracks for purple and deluxe yes we did so <laughs> um i'm sure many of you have seen this on our facebook page on prince.org on twitter on variety.com uh -huh. on jezebel.com <laughs> yeah. on the currents website and all these other places indeed it is true the violet reality leaked the track list for Purple yep. Rain and Deluxe. And if you haven't seen it, we will post a link to our original Facebook post in the description. Yeah, um, and I just want to say, if you saw the track list anywhere other than directly from us and they didn't credit us, then let us know so that we can 
write to them and be like, hey, don't be an asshole. Credit the people that did the work. <laughs> um, so yeah, I mean, I want to tell you guys a little bit how it happened. We did say in the post, but essentially um, I got a tip from somebody um, that Warners had registered the tracks in uh, a database. Now, there are several databases that in the music industry we use. I'm not going to say which specific one it is because I don't want Warners to know um, in case they haven't <laughs> figured it out. Um, but uh, you, when you write a song and the song is coming out, uh, you register the songs with several databases in order to make sure that your royalties are collected properly. There are several companies out there whose job it is to collect the royalties whenever a song is played on the radio or played in a TV show or in you know, a movie or anything like that. Um, the royalties generated from that are collected by uh, the company over a period of time and then they pay the, the, the artist um, and whoever is credited as a writer uh, every quarter. So I'm a professional songwriter myself. I have several, uh, probably a couple of dozen songs registered um, with the same agencies and same databases. Um, and I've had stuff in TV, on TV shows and you know played on radio quite a lot myself. So that's why I'm a, a registered paid member. Um, so I got the tip that the songs were there. I looked it up. I found the codes for them, the ISRC codes, which are you know, the individual unique codes used to identify songs. And I played around with the codes and went sequentially through what we found <laughs> yeah. until we found everything that had been registered so far by Warners. And we made a little graphic of it and we shared it online and it went <laughs> And then obviously, yeah, the story here would be that if they are going to release it in June, then they would have had to put it together and put it out there to, me, to be manufactured in May. And which month yeah. is it almost? It's May. almost May, <laughs> yep. So manufacturing will begin uh, soon on the set yeah. um, for it coming out in June. So that's why the tracks are registered now. Yeah. Um, people have been waiting for this for a very, very long time. True. Not just since Prince passed, not just since Prince even announced it first in 2014, but for many, many, many years before that, Purple Rain Deluxe was sort of this sort of holy grail of what people wanted for, to, yeah. to see come mm -hmm. out. Because obviously, you know, Prince's biggest album, most people's huge, huge albums that have sold that many have had, you know, deluxe reissues and remasters over the years. Um, it was quite unusual for an album like Purple Rain to get to be you know, 30 years old without a proper remaster and proper deluxe edition and, and all that kind of stuff. So um, it was kind of like the yardstick of, of what we need from Prince and now the Prince estate going forward in terms of getting all of those yeah. early albums remastered with deluxe editions and bonus tracks and whatnot. So, so we knew when we found those tracks that it was going to be an absolutely huge deal. Um, we didn't know that it would blow up to <laughs> the level that it did. We didn't expect, we didn't really names, know what kind of, yeah. yeah, we didn't expect like huge, huge, you know, websites like Variety and Jezebel to be um, no. covering it and crediting us for it. Um, but that just goes to show how much people have wanted this yeah. release. Sure. Um, as it stands right now, um, it appears that you've got the regular remaster which was done in 2015 it's labeled as 2015 Paisley Park remaster mm -hmm. you've got a disc that appears to have all of the extended versions and seven inch edits on it and then you've got a disc with all the unreleased material on it so tracks like electric in a course and possessed and velvet kitty cat mm -hmm. and um, so on and so on check the description for the link to yeah. our original uh, post on Facebook. Actually, our original post got taken down by Warner Brothers. <laughs> yeah. So there was a couple of people before that that were like, oh, this isn't real. You've just made this up. And it's like, no, Warner Brothers pulled down our post. So I think that shows you we that got, it yeah. is real. We got them an actual warning of them. And if we like do something like this again, then we will basically be kicked off Facebook with that page. So uh, yeah. It was total so, nonsense uh, though. Know. It was total yeah, nonsense. You, was. Can't, you can't file copyright strikes on information. No, it's just such a petty thing to do is, so you know yeah. what warner brothers like this was your fault if you're upset because us leaking this like you know hurt your whatever massive pr plan you're planning to do which apparently hasn't even you know appeared yet because you have yet to make an official announcement even though the information is now out there yeah. then that's your fault because the tracks are registered you put them out there you should have known that somebody would find them um you should have known that the prince community do not mess around so <laughs> your fault i'm not sorry Sorry, not sorry. <laughs> All right, moving on from that. <laughs> Just stopping you from cussing Warner Brothers out entirely. <laughs> sorry. 
All right, moving on from that, there is a couple of beautiful things that happened on the day that Prince passed away. The first thing there is that a lot of bridges and buildings in Minneapolis turned purple and even in the UK and like all over the world, buildings and bridges and even lights turned purple and that's so beautiful. Yep, a beautiful just, gesture. Yeah for our wonderful prince. Yeah, so really, really like that. And we've got some news about another album that never came out. Oh yeah, that's about right. The Dream Factory. The Dream Factory. <laughs> so. You know, we mentioned this last week. Yeah, um, we did. But this has now happened. Yeah. So, so if you uh, saw last week's video, you know that. Um, Susanna Malvoin made artwork for the Dream Factory at the time. And the interesting thing about the story that she told us is that the Dream Factory was originally gonna be called at first the Flesh slash Dream Factory, because the Flesh was recorded in the same like take like situation or like in the same session as the Dream Factory was. Yeah, so she you... made really cool artwork there and she posted it online as well. So she showed it at Electric Features and then she posted it online. We'll put a link in the description yeah. to that artwork if you haven't seen it yet. Now, if you're sitting there wondering, what's the flesh? I've never heard of the flesh. <laughs> might have heard of Dream Factory, but I've yeah. never heard of the flesh. So the flesh was um, a group of tracks, instrumental jazz tracks, kind of like, a bit like uh, Madhouse, which would come later, mm -hmm. but more parade kind of era with you know the revolution and different people, that kind of era. Um, the flesh leaked about, you know, Sometime in the last year, I can't remember exactly when, but it's out there. The tracks yeah. um, that made up the flesh are out there. Some of them were used as, um, you know, score music for in parts of Under the Cherry Moon. That's where some people had first heard them. But up until recently, the, the full flesh sessions were not out there, but they are out there now. It's circulating in the wide world of yeah. the internet. But what we didn't know was that, uh, as Susanna revealed with this artwork, that at one point, the flesh and Dream Factory were all part of the same thing. Yeah, they so, were like one big album, probably yeah. like a double disc or even a triple disc, like Crystal Ball or Emancipation. Exactly, <laughs> exactly. And then later on, obviously, Prince decided to uh, split them up and Dream Factory was going to be its own album yeah. with the revolution. And then, of course, it never came out. the revolution broke so, yeah. up. And <laughs> Dream Factory or bits of Dream Factory along with bits of Camille and bits yeah. of Crystal Ball all uh, merged together yeah. to create the released Sign of the Times, yeah. the masterpiece that is <laughs> yeah. Sign of the Times. So that's awesome. But then again, obviously, people that are good at digging, and a lot of us are, know what the track list for Dream Factory was going to be, and we know what the order was going to be, and what the tracks were, and you know. That's right. <laughs> it's awesome. That's right. So now we know the artwork. Or we do. one of the versions of the artwork. We do. So as we mentioned before, on Record Store Day, there was a lot of awesome print stuff that came out, and there was this green final for What Time Is It that we really wanted, but we couldn't get our hands on it so yeah yet. if you have it, we it, get our yet. Hands on it yet. yet so <laughs> we will get our hands on it eventually but if you have it please tell us because it's so cool so yeah but um electric fetus one of prince's if not his favorite record store did prince merchandise for that day so they did a couple of awesome prince hoodies that's right that's right <laughs> well uh, we'll link to them in the description yeah. i'm not sure if they're still available past record store day they might be yeah. um but either way it'd be cool to have a look at them so we'll put them in the description below also, little tip from uh, from a source, there's still a couple of these green vinyls available at Amoeba Records on their website. So if Ooh. you would want it and Ooh. you're in the USA, so you don't have to pay as much for shipping as you would to Europe, please, please go get them because it's so worth it. It's so cool. Yeah, I mean, I don't want to talk too much about the Record Store Day stuff because we covered it in previous yeah. videos. However, the other cool thing that a lot of people managed to get on was the reissue of the uh, picture disc yes. for Little Red Corvette. Yes. Um, we already have the original of that. Mm -hmm. It's over there in our, on our <laughs> Prince see shelf. Now, but it is, um, yeah. <laughs> we'll show you at some point, yeah. but maybe we'll get the reissue as well, mm -hmm. um, even though it's just the same. But still, oh well. <laughs> <laughs> some of you may know, some of you may not know, in the 90s, Prince had um, some nightclubs that he owned and did nights at called Glam Slam of course. So there was Glam Slam Minneapolis, there was Glam Slam LA, there was Glam Slam Miami, and I believe there was one in Japan as well, actually, and there was four Glam Slam clubs. <clears throat> um, and one cool thing that happened in the last week was that a bunch of artwork that originally um, had been in the Glam Slam clubs, or one of them, um, I think the Minneapolis one, uh, was brought out of storage, it had been in storage for you know, 20 years since Glam Slam closed. Um, and they did a show, they did an exhibition showing all of this artwork um, that Prince had previously had in the Glam Slam Club. Yeah. So that's pretty cool as well. Um, 
shout out to the folks that put that on. That is an awesome, awesome thing to do. And we're gonna link to that in the description below. Yes, we are. <clears throat> the other thing that was cool on the 21st of April is that Snapchat made a little print overlay, you know, when you take a picture of not yourself, but like the room around you and you can just make an overlay of like it. A frame, like yeah, a frame, like a frame that you swipe yeah. through. Yeah, um, although uh, I'm not sure if this is, this is true, but I think I did see it mentioned um, that when Snapchat first put the overlay on, they got his date of birth wrong. Oh no. And it said, apparently it originally said 1978, <laughs> and then they quickly changed it to be 1958. But uh, yeah, get it right, people. Come on, it's not that hard. It's like 20 years different, so you know. <laughs> Plus there was something magical in the waters in 58, so you have to get that right. Exactly, exactly. Yeah. There was another cool article um, actually that we saw and some video as well that went along with it. This is to do with Paisley Park. A lady named Angie Marchis, who is the head of archives at Paisley Park. So her job is at the moment is cataloging uh, everything that they've found basically. Yeah. And apparently they have already cataloged many thousands of items, mm -hmm. whether it be outfits, clothing, shoes, um, you know, guitars and whatnot, and apparently the stuff that they've they've catalogued so far, even though it's many thousands of items, is only a tiny, tiny fraction of what is in Paisley Park. So wow. it's a it's a long, ongoing job because um, everything has to be sort of you know professionally photographed, and they have to fill in like the right form, yeah. with all the information about it, to you know properly, properly catalog and archive everything that is there. Supposedly, they already have found like thousands of pairs of shoes. <laughs> Two thousand to, Two be, thousand uh, pairs to of be, be exact. And wow. um, ladies, don't we all just want that? Two thousand pairs of shoes. That's a different pair for every day that you're alive. <laughs> wow. Now I want to know how many outfits they'll find. <laughs> many but more yeah, than that, I yeah, would imagine. Prince's shoes imagine. were always so amazing. There should be a book just on like the shoes that he wore. <laughs> I think maybe you know maybe the real reason he built Paisley Park was not to like build studios, but just to have a huge place to keep all of his stuff to keep his shoes just for his <laughs> shoes we want to throw anything away shoe <laughs> i don't think prince ever threw anything away he may have left things in random cities but he didn't seem to throw much away but, no, oh well. only like during the love sexy tour he left like half of the stage in random <laughs> cities because it was just too, too expensive too much to, to travel. cart around to it all around the world yeah it was one of the most amazing sets he's ever had though with like yes, the basketball court absolutely. we watched it recently so we're, uh, we did yeah. we did and speaking of paisley park um although the celebration only just finished uh apparently joel who is the head of the company that runs paisley park um already said some words to effect of that you know there is going to be another celebration next year 2018 um maybe we'll make it to that one who knows I hope so. who yeah. knows we'll try our best yeah so that seems like it is going to be a yearly event which is pretty yeah. cool obviously the uh you know the april time frame around the time frame of prince's passing is not the only point in the year during which we will be celebrating Prince no. or other people will be celebrating Prince and putting on events and whatnot. So the other time is obviously in June around yeah. Prince's <laughs> birthday. Particularly special to me since uh, the last birthday that he was alive for, he tweeted out a link to a newspaper article that I had written about him, uh, which was the only thing that he tweeted that day. So that's, that'll always be a special memory for me and, and we'll always, you know, even though Prince didn't necessarily always celebrate his birthday as being no. a Jehovah's Witness, mm -hmm. that doesn't mean that the rest, the rest of us in the fan base can't, you know, acknowledge his birthday and celebrate that day. Um, and it appears the MPG feels the same way. Yeah. <laughs> the MPG are going to do some tribute shows right after Prince's birthday on the 8th to the 10th of June this year. And they're going to do it at the Fine Line Music Club in Minneapolis. Yep. Um, now, of course, we must mention that the NPG being a collective that has had many, many people in it, yeah. you could be seeing the NPG here or there or here or there and it not necessarily be uh, the same people. So the what we've heard about these shows that are going to be in Minneapolis, that it's going to be Michael B on yeah. drums and Sunny T yeah. on bass and Tommy Barbarella on keyboards. And they're also going to be joined by the Hornheads, um, which is very cool. <laughs> awesome. So if you're in Minneapolis, um, around that time, around Prince's birthday, make sure you go and check out the NPG. Um, I have absolutely no doubt that other events are going to be happening around Prince's birthday as well. 
um, not just in, in Minneapolis, but elsewhere. So as and when we hear about those, we'll keep you guys updated. Yes, like we always do. <laughs> like we always do. <laughs> All right, guys, that wraps up the most important news for this week. Of course, we couldn't cover everything because it has been such a massive, massive week. Oh, oh, oh. Oh, you know something else? <laughs> Jesse Johnson's show uh, last week in Minneapolis, he shared some hilarious stories about oh, Prince. Oh, yeah, yeah, you need uh, to watch that clip. <laughs> <laughs> including one where, to do with Prince not having any clue about how to do laundry. Let's just say that. Let's just say let's that, just say that yes. it's, it's worth, with, it's with worth watching. Show, it's just, you know. <laughs> but yeah, so we'll, we'll link to that as well. Um, and yeah, sorry. That does wrap up this week of Prince now. <laughs> nah, like for real now. So yeah, um, tell us your stories about Paisley Park if you went or whatever else you did on the 21st of April and even through that entire weekend. Like tell us how you felt and like what you've been doing, if you've been hanging around with friends and fans and you know, tell us your stories because we really like hearing your stories and thank you so much for always sticking with us and you know, getting us through this really hard weekend as well. Yeah, and thank you all to all the people that have commented and watched our video. 101 reasons we love and miss Prince. It has already become one of our fastest growing uh, videos ever and has almost more comments than almost any other <laughs> video that we've done. It yeah. already has like 30 plus comments um, and a bunch of people sharing it, which is really yeah. nice. And they're all so sweet. You guys are so nice. Like we always tell that to each other when we're like, when we've uploaded, up there when we've uploaded a video and then we like look back on the comments we're like these guys are so sweet and you're all like, so supportive and we love you so much yeah yeah um so that's it yeah for this week in prince episode 29 <laughs> on this very very important week yeah um in prince news and prince history um yeah that's it we'll see you next week for episode 30 yeah mm. 30 episodes in so until that time <laughs> I'm Casey Rain. I'm Kim Camellia. And we, we are, are the, Violet the Violet Reality. Reality. Facebook.com forward slash The Violet Reality. Go and like it if you haven't already. Yes. <laughs> Catch you next week, guys. Bye-bye. Peace.